Running tabletop RPGs for people is a delightful hobby, where you get to entertain your friends, exercise your creativity, and concoct elaborate means of psychological torture, all at the same time. One day, a friend was chatting to me about how some people run heist games in architectural 3D software, and they let their players plan out the means of infiltration. To say I was fascinated by this hitherto unthought of possibility is an understatement. After all, it more easily allows players to see height, scale, and character design. Now, I know there's already 3D tabletop RPG software like Tailspire, but at the time I had no idea. Plus, that lacks the kind of customization I want. Instead, I wisely started learning the free, open-source software called Blender, while also juggling a chaotic mix of day and night shifts at a new hotel. What could possibly go wrong? Here's the thing about running tabletop games in general. The bar is really bloody low. The amount of people who want to play in tabletop RPGs massively outnumbers the amount of people who genuinely want to run tabletop RPGs. Players will endure some pretty rough campaigns if it means they get to relax rather than prepare content after a busy work schedule. Similarly, if you run a game in 3D, your players will not expect Disney tier quality. They'll just find it novel you're doing it at all. Here's the first map I ever made in 3D. The purple bits used to have textures, but I lost them. See how it kind of looks like Frozen Synapse or Super Hard. Nevertheless, you can kind of tell these are people holding weapons. You can tell this is maybe some kind of a bar, and you can tell when somebody's in half cover or not. As time went on, my skill slowly improved. I added simple materials and even cutscenes. Eventually, we end up where I am today, which is nowhere near AAA video game development or anything, but nevertheless kind of charming and good enough for tabletop. Oh, I'm sure you're just brimming with envy at my completely ridiculous choice of time sync hobby. But you too can put way too much effort into tabletop RPG creation with this simple beginner's guide to Blender. Let's get started, shall we? Everybody has Steam, so type Blender into the store search and download it for free. If for some reason you don't have Steam, just download it from the website. Once you've booted it up, don't be intimidated by how many buttons there are. We don't need most of them. But also, and I can't stress this enough, don't immediately experiment by pressing random buttons to figure out the software. That's the mistake most beginners make. Doing that just inevitably ends up with you stuck in a menu-based hell from which there is no escape. Instead, left-click on that cube you see there, which should highlight it. From here, you will need to consign a few hotkeys to muscle memory. G is for grab. This will let you move things. R is for rotate. S is for scale. If you press X, Y, or Z while doing any of those things, it'll lock it to the X, Y, or Z axis. Obviously, Control z to undo still works here like in any other software. If you want to add a new object, hold shift and press A to add things. You could construct a whole level with just these controls if you really think about it. If you want to change the color of an object, click on this little ball icon down here. Go to this menu, press new, then play around with these settings. If you don't see any change, just hold down the Z key and enter material preview mode. Congratulations. You now know the very basics, but obviously this isn't quite enough to run a game. We're missing two vital components. Firstly, we need characters, and secondly, we need either a hex or square grid. Let's start with a character. Shift A to add a new cube, select your new cube with left click, and now to introduce you to a whole new world. In the top left, there's a drop down menu. Ignore everything except object and edit mode. Click on edit mode and edit the selected object. Now, right next to that drop-down menu, there are these little icons here, which allow you to choose what you're selecting, which are corners, lines, or faces. Try selecting bits of your object using these different options and get a feel for it. Remember, G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. All of that still works here to shape your object. If you want to extrude a face, select a face and press E. If you want to do a loop cut, Hold down CTRL and press R. Want symmetry? 
Press A to select everything. Then click this mesh drop down here and click Symmetrize. In face select mode you can assign materials to specific faces if you want a blocky sort of texture. If you want more materials just press this little plus icon in the materials menu. Once you're done making your character go back to object mode and ta-da! You've got a character! Isn't it beautiful? Practically Elden Ring tier quality right here. As I said, your players won't actually give a crap that it looks awful. They'll just find the whole thing very novel. Lastly, we've got to make the grid. There's a couple of methods. Buckle up, this could get a little bit complicated. For a hex grid, go to Edit, Preferences, click Add-ons, and in this search bar type Extra Objects, and take this box to turn that on. Back in object mode, you'll notice when you press Shift A, there's now more objects under Mesh. In Extras, click on Honeycomb. As soon as you add the honeycomb, don't press a single button or click anywhere. As long as you haven't done anything, there should be a little box in the bottom left here. Click the arrow, and now you can change how big your honeycomb grid is. Congrats! You can now add hex grids. Let's say instead you want a square grid. Shift A and add a plane. Just like with the honeycomb, don't press anything and open this little menu down here. As an example, I'll set the size to 100. Now go to edit mode, right click and press subdivide. Again, don't press anything and instead use the menu in the bottom left to turn subdivision to the same number as the size of your plane. For me that'll be 100. You now have a grid of 1 meter squares, but as soon as you go back to object mode you can't see the grid, oh no! To fix this, keep your plane selected, click on this little orange button on the right hand side of the screen, click the viewport display drop down, and tick the wireframe box. Wowzers, we now have a grid! Since this grid is made up of corners, lines and faces, we can even edit it in edit mode, or add a material. In edit mode, you can use the delete key to remove bits. In either object or edit mode, you can use shift D to duplicate the grid. If even that's not enough for you, do everything you just did, but also go to this little wrench icon in the right, and add a modifier called wireframe. Edit the wireframe settings until it's fit enough, and there you go, a square grid. Congratulations, Shinji. You now know everything you need to run tabletop RPGs in 3D. This means you can use verticality or even custom-designed monsters or player characters for your games. One day you can even be like me, completely obsessed and deranged, making increasingly complicated monster designs and levels instead of seeking gainful job opportunities and relevant workplace skills. Your friends and family will definitely think you've gone far, far off the deep end. What a blessed and worthy life. Wow. Anyway, that's all I had to say about running games in Blender. Bye bye now.